one of us was like, I feel like I'm doing all the dishes. And the other one was like, well, I did them yesterday. So I said, yes. Oh, that's fine. We can get rid of my stuff. It's like when you're on the same softball team and you're like, go teammate. Uh -huh. Say home buddies. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what is it? Home bodies. Like you're a home body. Well, your buddies at home. One of our oh. good friends said, oh, it's just not the same with just you. <laughs> you're the queen of dad jokes. Call me daddy. No. What's up, guys? Hello. So we're gonna talk about what we wish we knew before we moved in together. It's gonna be super spicy. We're gonna be talking about our relationship, ups and downs, drama. <laughs> so we're gonna spill all the tea, but first we actually have to go get some, so. We're come. gonna get some tea. Yeah, come with us. This thing's freaked me out. I'm always afraid that they're gonna drop suddenly. Kiss me. Spice. Both. Here's our little tea setup. This is a cinnamon apple one. Oh my gosh. That's so cute. Ooh, that's like, it's nice and subtle. Mm -hmm. Seven minutes deep, so. Seven minutes of heaven. <laughs> I think when they say seven minutes of heaven, it's something mm -hmm. different. What do you mean? Let's do this. Tea time. All right, baby, so what's the first thing we're talking about? We're gonna talk about what we wish we knew when we moved in together. We moved in together before we were married. <gasps> Scandalous. We moved in together like the same month we started dating officially. <laughs> So, we're a stereotype. I just graduated college, needed somewhere to live. And I have a spare room. And she... <laughs> but you pretty much stayed every night in my room. And then eventually we like consolidated our stuff into one room and then eventually we got our own place. Just kept moving together. Now we're, we've been married for two years. So that's the backstory. So really quick shout out to my sister. She uh, got us these little cute Jeez. mugs. So yeah, there's a lot of things that we learned through the moving in together process and we wanted to share it with you who may already be moved in with your partner or you're thinking about it or you're daydreaming about your future love life or... Or somebody you know, asked you to move in with them and now you have to think about like, it and you're like, uh, <laughs> so you're frantically searching YouTube to see if there's any other queer people out there who might have some wisdom. Yeah. So let's dig into the first thing. Okay, so first things first, have your boundaries. Have your boundaries. When Megan and I moved in together, we realized there's a lot of meshing in together that happens when you move in, which it's supposed to be that way. What was one of your boundaries, babe? Basically, like, we had a small space, and so it was like, are we keeping this thing of mine or are we keeping this thing of yours? And if you oh. have like two of the same thing, you might be kind of like, well, we don't need both of these. And then you're like, okay, who's are we going to keep? And she's speaking in code. We got rid of a lot of my music stuff when we moved in together because we've both been musicians for so long. So there was a lot of overlap, like recording equipment and sound mm -hmm. equipment and a tiny little space to keep it all. I was like newly in love. So I said, yes. Oh, that's fine. We can get rid of my stuff. When the honeymoon phase wore off, I said, we got rid of all my stuff. <laughs> so. Okay, we didn't get rid of all your stuff. No, I didn't. What would your boundary have been? I would have sat with myself and really figured out what was important for me, what was a hard line for me to protect, and what was okay to give up. You really need to have your boundaries because you need to know what is important to you now that you are inviting somebody else into your space. You were like a single person in your own space, in your own life, and you only had to consider yourself and maybe roommates or your family or whatever. And now you just invited another person into your space or you went and made a new space together. Boundaries also can be with your time. It's basically the things you would resent your partner if like they made you get rid of it and it feels like a part of you. 
yeah, basically just like speaking your needs, having those boundaries. The second thing that we learned through moving in together, be prepared to compromise. Be prepared to compromise. compromise. Yeah, yeah. Your relationship is more important than anything you don't exactly like. If your partner has a bunch of like books, for example, <laughs> I think I tried to like get you to pare down on some of your books. And now you regret it. I was like, well, what if you just get a Kindle and... Now I have a Kindle and I also have a lot of books. Yeah. So it works. So I think that was definitely something that I was like, okay, I will compromise and have all these books, even though I didn't want like a ton of books lying around our house. And you compromised by getting rid of a few of your books. I love books. You don't have to keep every single book you've ever been given. Yeah. And there's always other areas to compromise with. Colors. That was a big one. How we decorated the room. She moved into my space. So I like a lot of dark blues and dark wood. And she doesn't. She likes light grays and modern. And Yeah. Some stuff we actually went and like got a whole new comforter. It was just like... We kind created of, a style together. Yeah. We created a style together. Sometimes getting something new together that you pick up is like the perfect compromise. You'll keep a little bit of you, you'll keep a little bit of the other person, and you'll have some new things together. We all have like weird little things that we have. Like know. what? I don't know, like I have little things for my grandma. Got some weird chotskis. <laughs> and I've got like my comic book type stuff. Like I've got Superman posters and... And we both have keepsake boxes that we put a lot of stuff in, so either of us isn't like displaying all of our like little How's your tea? Mm. It's good, huh? It's like a warm blanket wrapped around me on the inside. <laughs> the third thing that we wish we knew when we moved in together is that we needed to have our own outlets. Have you known outlets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't mean like, oh my gosh, I can't plug in my charger because the outlet's on your side of the bed. Although that is a problem too. Oh, he said it so seriously too, like, <laughs> and I don't mean when you plug your phone into. I just want to be clear for the people. You're the queen of dad jokes. Call me daddy. No. Okay. You need to figure out what you need to recharge. From beginning to end of the day, you're in each other's space. Both of us need to recharge in different ways. I chose to get outside a lot. I went to the beach or go on a hike and just spend time alone or with my dog. It doesn't always have to be in conflict. You can take care of yourself and your relationship before you even hit a point of conflict by being intentional in how you create outlets to recharge. Back to like boundaries, like maybe my boundary would be like, I'm, I'm in my Megan space right now. Even though we live together, this is my Megan space. And we have friends that we are both friends with. And then we also have friends that either were my friends originally or your friends originally. My sister will call, Hi Rachel! <laughs> I know you're watching this video. Anyway, if I have my sister on the phone or somebody, I might put them on speaker and then be like, Hey babe, do you want to like talk with us? And sometimes she'll be like, No, no. She'll be I'll like, be like put, She'll put the hand up. She'll be in her headphones. She'll be like, Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> so that I know, okay, I'm gonna go into my space and she's in her space. Like yeah, so having your own friend group is super important and going out and seeing the friends that you had before you became in a relationship, like maintaining those friendships together as a couple and individually is still really important. A lot of my friends though, when I show up just myself, they'll be like, where's Megan? One of our oh. good friends said, oh, it's just not the same with just you. <laughs> 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 um, what was our point? <laughs> Have your own outlets. Just do what you gotta do. Okay, fourth thing is you are on the same team. You're on the same team. Same team. Dream team. You're playing for the same team, sports people. It's like when you're on the same softball team and you're like, go teammate. And they're like, yeah. And they slap your butt. And you're like, woo, you made that goal. And <laughs> that's a lot of references. When it comes to doing chores and doing stuff around the house, basically give each other benefit of the doubt. There are so many times that dishes were dirty and 
one of us was like, I feel like I'm doing all the dishes. And the other one was like, well, I did them yesterday. Like keeping score yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, stop giving score. You're on the same team, but it's a game where there's no points. <laughs> stop with the like sports and game like <laughs> metaphor. Okay. Look out for each other. Be kind to each other. Make a chore chart if you have to, because sometimes we'll do stuff that each other doesn't see or notice or keep track of. If I look at our chore chart right now, it's like 50 things. Splitting those up and putting them on a list is helpful for me because I know this is what I'm responsible for and then I feel accomplished because I'm investing in our relationship, I am investing in our home and it's not all falling on your shoulder or my shoulder. Sometimes we can go so straight to like they just don't care or like they don't they're not thinking about it. They hate me. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so the last thing that we wish we knew before we moved in is that we needed to keep going out. Keep going out. Keep going out. <laughs> you are now in the same space together. You are with the person that you love. You are with your best friend, your favorite person on the planet. We love spending time together so much and it's so easy to just be homebodies. It's so easy to become homebodies when you're with your favorite person that you are in Did a you home. Say homebodies? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> what is it? Homebodies, like you're a homebody. Well, your buddies at home, it's easy to. <laughs> You look annoyed at the camera. Like, it's easy. <laughs> it's easy to become homebodies. Keep it together, Sherelle. <laughs> it's easy to become isolated when you are with your favorite person and you live with them. Keep going out, keep investing in your community and your relationships because. There's a lot of togetherness, but your world needs to be a whole lot bigger than just the two of you. We have a bonus tip for you, and that is be grounded together. Be grounded together. Grounded, grounded. There's a lot of opinions out in the world. Maybe you have like complicated families or dynamics, but there might be people that have an opinion about you living together, your relationship, and what order you do things for us it just kind of unfolded how it did and we moved in super early and then you might even have like a friend or somebody that's concerned like hey this all happened really fast and you're moving in together you just have to be grounded in what you know and stick with that it's great to take wisdom of your friends mm -hmm. and your family as yeah. long as they're not toxic but you need to be grounded with your partner or partners because you are the ones that are living out your relationship. So you need to know what is right for you and your partner. We had every piece of advice from, oh, you guys just got engaged and you're gonna have kids to, I don't understand why you guys are living together. Just go down to the courthouse and figure it out. Everybody's gonna have an opinion. <laughs> yeah, it really just depends on your relationship and what's right for your relationship. There's not a blanket statement that can apply to every couple on when it's right to move in and when it's right to get married. And, and if it's right to get married and... Be grounded together. Put your partner first and just remember that you and them are the grounding piece in your relationship. I think just my heart led the way. I felt so grounded in us. Living together was like, duh. Of course we're living together. We both came from conservative backgrounds, so there were a lot of people in our communities and families that had a lot of opinions. Stay grounded with your partner. Decide together what's best for you. And fuck the haters. <laughs> and stay grounded with yourself, you know? Yeah. So yeah, thank you for watching. Wherever you're at, if this was just like a fun video for you, then we are so glad you came. If this was like, you're trying to like learn something about your relationship or about living with other people, I'm sure you know what you're doing. I'm sure you are on the right path and that you know what is good for you. Moving in together was a really good choice for us and we love spending every moment together. We love waking up together. Sharing life is like, such a beautiful thing. Seeing each other in your own little world is like so special. When you love someone, you just love watching them just do their little things. And so <laughs> it's a beautiful thing that we have been able to have. So I'm really glad that we chose to, we stuck by each other. You're the best decision I've ever made. So likewise. <laughs>
yeah, so think about it and decide what's best for you. For those of you that are new to our channel, which is probably you, make sure that you like and subscribe. Thanks for being here. Thanks for showing up. We see all you new subscribers. We appreciate you. Yeah, so see you next time. See you next time.